loved, I've loved them since I've first seen them, but I, I don't really understand why. This is a tardigrade, and biologist Bob Goldstein isn't its only admirer. Yeah, there are a lot of tardigrade enthusiasts out there. Also known as water bears, these microscopic organisms live everywhere from Antarctica to the deep sea to your backyard, probably. They always have eight legs and those trademark toes. Yeah, we, we call them claws. Let's face it, they're pretty cute. Cute and kind of clumsy when they walk around. But don't let the cuddly facade deceive you. They can survive some amazing things. Water bears can go into this sort of extreme hibernation called the Tun State. And in that state, they're almost invincible. They've survived extremes of, of pressure. They've been sent up in a rocket and survived the vacuum of space. They'll survive radiation. They can be dried out and then resurrected a decade later. They've withstood boiling and deep freezing down to below one degree Kelvin. Zero degrees Kelvin is where molecular motion completely stops. So that's pretty chilly, but just warm them up. And rehydrate them. They'll, uh, they'll walk away and talk about it. <laughs> How exactly this works isn't, isn't understood well at all. It's estimated that there are about a thousand species of tardigrades, and they have no close relatives. Tardigrades are their own phylum. For comparison... We're in the same phylum as sea squirts are. Their neighboring phyla happen to include two of the best studied organisms in science, the fruit fly and the nematode C. elegans. And being located in this neighborhood of the Tree of Life, makes tardigrades appealing organisms to study. Them being closely related means they probably have roughly similar genomes, and that means we can make one-to-one -one comparisons more often than you could with a distant relative. Goldstein is specifically interested in the evolution of development. We know organisms share genes, but some come out looking like tardigrades and others like fruit flies. So how does this happen? What must have changed is something in their development to give rise to an organism of a different shape. The hope is that by studying how tardigrades develop cell by cell, we might be able to make sense of how developmental biology has changed to produce something that has eight legs instead of six or more. But despite all this, water bears have remained a relatively minor player in the scientific community. There are just a handful of people who study tardigrade development. But it could have been different. The Nobel laureate Sidney Brenner, who established roundworms as a model organism, was close to choosing tardigrades, Goldstein says. They were being groomed for fame and they got dropped at the last minute. <laughs> or maybe they're just in their ton phase, waiting to be revived. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.